Hello viewers and welcome to News and TV. I am Makanaka Masenyama. Stories making the headlines. Defense and War Vets PEMSEC defense former Liberation War Fighters rewards in the courts. Chombo paying price for Kasukuere Mozambique crimes in business. Money supply up $3 million as imports and exports decrease 15%. In sports, mighty warriors handed fair Kosafa Cup draw. Now, the news in greater detail. Zimbabweans who fought in the struggle for independence deserve to be paid for sacrificing their lives, Defense and War Veterans Permanent Secretary Mark Marongwe has said. Marongwe was appearing before Parliament's Defense and Security Portfolio Committee Wednesday and accused the local media of failing to understand the importance of gratuities extended to former liberation war fighters. I have never seen this anywhere in the world. Uh, you come across articles even in the newspaper that talk of uh, these veterans were given $50,000 and they destroyed the economy, this and that. And I remember engaging in this discussion with uh, the Minister of uh, Defense of Namibia and uh, he was saying, this is, this is uh, kind of ri ridiculous. When the veterans got the 50,000, did they go and spend it outside the country or it was plowed back into the economy? And you know, I never thought of that. And this is an outsider who was telling me, uh, we, 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 we took a long time to recognize this. Uh, many countries, the USA, they fight any war. Those who came from Iraq, and you can always ask, what were they doing in Iraq? They recognized in full without any questions being asked. But here, for some reason, we have a very low regard of the people who sacrificed their youth and the most, of their, most valuable asset of their lives to, 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 to fight for, for this country. Marongwe argued that even former colonial power Britain and other Western countries still pay their citizens who took part in the First and Second World Wars. Former President Robert Mugabe was in 1997 arm-twisted into paying out $50,000 to tens of thousands of war veterans. The scheme was, according to critics, abused and looted by senior government officials including former Vice President Joyce Mujuru, who reportedly claimed over 100% disability. The unbudgeted payouts resulted in the local currency losing up to 72% of its value at the time and the land expropriation program that followed two years later pushed the country's currency into the dustbin. Opposition party ZAPU has called on government to establish a national Gukura Wundi genocide museum that would serve to remind future generations of government atrocities against ordinary citizens in the early years of majority rule. ZAPU spokesperson Ipitule Maposa told journalists in Blawayo Tuesday that Zimbabwe National Genocide Monument of Matebeleland must be constructed and maintained in perpetuity at national level to remind future generations of the evils of the genocide. Maposa added that the museum could act not only as a reminder but deterrent to future governments against abuse of power. Unlike his predecessor Robert Mugabe, President Emerson Mnangagwa has allowed debate around Gukrawundi and reburial of victims of the state-sponsored atrocities that rocked the country between 1981 and 1987. Conservative estimates claim that some 20,000 civilians were killed by a Krek military unit known as the 5th Brigade unleashed by Mugabe under the guise of hunting down a handful of dissidents in the western parts of the country. Former Women's Affairs Minister Nyasha Chikwinya faces imprisonment after she failed to comply with the court order 
compelling her to settle a 25,000 US dollar debt owed to Old Mutual Property Corporation Limited. Old Mutual obtained a judgment against Chukwinga in case number HC13376 of 2012 for payment of a capital debt in the sum of 17,583 US dollars and 8,337 US dollars holding over damages at the rate of 434 US dollars for rent and 214 US dollars for operating costs and the arbitrator's cost of 1,500 US dollars. Six years ago, Old Mutual applied for a civil imprisonment order against Chukwinga in 2012, but this was inexplicably not enforced. Now the former cabinet minister has disappeared into thin air. In the courts, Harare Magistrate Esther Chivasa Wednesday rejected former local government minister Ignatius Chombo's fresh application for the release of his passport, arguing the state's adherence to rules has been abused by other accused persons. The former ZANU-PF secretary and administration was last month dragged out of a plane at Robert Mugabe International Airport as he prepared to leave the country for medical treatment in South Africa. His passport was then seized by suspected state security agents, found its way back to court despite authorities claiming they had no role in the seizure. Chombo has since then unsuccessfully petitioned both the High Court and Supreme Court seeking the release of the travel document, claiming he was dying of cancer. Chombo is facing several criminal offenses and is yet to stand trial. In business, Zimbabwe's money supply has increased by almost $3 million, while both imports and exports have decreased by an average 17%. The latest Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe monthly economic review shows. During the period under review, exports registered a 15.3% decline while imports declined by 19.4% from 408 million US dollars in February 2019 to 329 million US dollars in March 2019. Economist Prosper Chitambara said the growth of money supply needs to be controlled especially now that the country has a local currency because failure to do so could trigger hyperinflation as happened in 2008. We are taking a short break. We'll be back soon. Many people have been asking me how did I manage it because they could see that everything was there, everything was just happening, People, things were being paid. So I've told people that uh, it was through diaspora funeral cash plan. So I would advise everyone to join this uh, diaspora funeral cash plan. Their policy is good because it took all the weight off my shoulders. In sports. Following a disappointing Africa Cup of Nations finals campaign by the senior Zimbabwe national men's football team, focus shifts to the women's team, the Mighty Warriors, who were drawn in Group C alongside Mozambique, Angola, and Eswatini at the 2019 Kosafa Women's Championship set for Johannesburg, South Africa, on Wednesday. The competition is set to run from July 31 to August 11 in Port Elizabeth for the second consecutive year. Last year, Zimbabwe failed to progress to the semi-finals of the competition after finishing second behind Uganda in Group C while missing out on the best-placed runners-up slot to guest Cameroon. The upcoming Kosafa Cup will be an opportunity for the Mighty Warriors to prepare for the upcoming Tokyo 2020 Olympics after failing to book a place at the Africa Women's Cup of Nations last year. Meanwhile, the Castle Laga Premier Soccer League resumes this weekend after a two-week break due to Africa Cup of Nations. In matches set for Saturday, Chicken In takes on Moshawani Stars at Luveve Stadium, as Platinum Stars host Blawayo Giants Highlanders at Baobab Stadium, while ZPC Kariba host Caps United at Nyamunga in the resort town. In selected Sunday fixtures, 
Dynamo's versus Chapungwe at Shofaro Stadium, Tel One play Harare City at Luveve Stadium, and Wange play Blawayo Chiefs at Collier Stadium. To end this news bulletin, here's a recap of headlines once more. Defense and War Vets Pemsek defends former Liberation War Fighters rewards. In the courts, Chombo paying price for Kasukwere Mozambique crimes in business. Money supply up $3 million as imports and exports decrease 15%. In sports, Mighty Warriors handed Fay Kosafa Cup draw. Reporting for NewZimbabwe.com, I am Makanaka Masengema. For this and more stories, visit our website www.newzimbabwe.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, News TV.